gonna have to start off with a harsh revelation. I have never played World of Goo. Boo, you're a fucking fraud! Okay, goddamn, give me a second. Can I explain myself? Why do you care so much anyways? Jesus Christ! Back when the Wii was a viable platform and not just a nostalgic paperweight, I remember seeing Woo get a shit ton on the Wii eShop. You might not remember or might not be old enough to remember, in which case, get out. But the Wii would cram shit down your throat the moment you opened up the store, and Woo would always be one of the games that tried to get me to play. Now, I was around 8 when I had my Wii, and the Wii point to USD conversion rate both confused and pissed me off, so I didn't use the shop very much. And when I did, I bought my Pokemon Ranch, the game that almost exclusively existed to connect to Diamond and Pearl, before I bought Diamond and Pearl. Now, someone out there could make the argument that this wasn't a complete waste of 10 actual real-life United States dollars, but I am not that person. Bottom line is that I was always seemingly against my will, made hyper-aware of Gootopia, but I never ended up playing it. And it skipped the Wii U release, so I guess match made a null space. I never would have expected, though, that around 12 years later, I'd be asked by over a dozen people to talk about this liquid legislature because I talked about a virtual fireplace game. But I guess life works in low latency sometimes. Luckily, though, I bought a copy just for this video, so let me just... Huh. World of Goo, which is based on a prototype game called Tower of Goo, was developed by 2D Boy, a company created and only housing them former EA developers Kyle Gabler and Ron Carmel, with Alan Blomquist coming on to help with the Wii porting and optimization, and Paul Hewins coming on to help with QA sometime during development. The game took roughly two years to make, cost about $10,000 from their own pockets, and was primarily developed in coffee shops. What the fuck kind of sentence is that? The game was released on October 13th, 2008 for both WiiWare and Windows, with every other version spanning from releasing later to very much later, not including the Switch port or the Netflix port. Let me repeat that, the fucking Netflix port of Goo Gone, which released last year! Because video games are a goddamn joke of a medium. Woo Googly has a deceptively simple premise, get them goo balls to the pipe and have enough enter to pass the level. However, a wrench the size of Missouri gets thrown into the machine when you realize that this game is physics based, and the physics are actively against you all the time forever, as well as the goo. They will fuck up the weight distribution of any structure to effectively kill themselves. I did not expect to open this game and have it treat me like... <laughs> It's pretty damn hard, though I am not an engineer, designer, or intelligent, so the stars are against me. Still, I did not expect to take two honest-to-god hours on Tower of Goo. That is something I should have taken to the grave. Beyond my incompetency, the reason I say this game is deceptive is because of the nuances of both the game's mechanics and physics. Starting simple, the pipe that ends the level actually sucks you in, meaning that you can build like a fucking maniac and still be fine if you manage to form a connection between your goo structure and the pipe. Even if your build is about as stable as Coney Island in the 1900s. As long as the land landscape doesn't change, you're locked in. You can also manipulate it like this. There's also quite a number of goo balls, each with their own unique abilities and learning curves. Like ones that detach and reattach, ones that catch on fire, ones that have more anchor points, ones that can attach to the surfaces, you get the picture. Each goo ball interacts with each other and the environment in clever ways that make it so that you can never truly anticipate what a level will throw at you. Which is fucked up when there are 48 levels and each of them feel unique. Even some of the best puzzle games I've ever played eventually become previous level except the terrain's a little different if you squint hard enough. That never happens in Goo Land. Each level as something drastically different from you. Whatever bullshit let you pass the previous isn't even quantifiable in the next. And then they just do this 48 times. 2008 WiiWare game. There's also bonus challenges for each level called Obsessive Completion Distinctions, or OCD, that's cute. They require you to beat a level with a certain amount of moves in a certain amount of time or with a certain amount of goo balls. Doing so will put a flag next to the level on the map and finishing all OCD challenges results in nothing. Not even a golden goo color. There are achievements behind it now, but that was added post-launch and I don't care. There's nothing in game for doing this. Even Little Inferno, a game that's actively against that type of thing, at least gives you a mouse pad to burn. Am I an idiot for expecting more? Yeah. So? The game's broken up into four chapters and an epilogue, each having a distinct flow, kinda. Chapter 4 is unarguably the best one level-wise, and even features a goo type that feels like Angry Birds one year prior. There is no way in hell that Angry Birds was inspired by the launch goo in the fourth chapter of World of Goo, but it's really funny to point out, and the odds technically aren't zero. The only real problem I have gameplay-wise is that it sometimes shits itself terribly. If there's any goo in the water, or if there's even a single explosion happening, the game falls apart pretty bad. Like, the worst I've ever seen a game do. It borderlines crashing, and I don't know why? This doesn't happen in any of the long plays I've watched, even on the Wii version, so I don't know, maybe my copy's cursed, go figure. It's not game ruining, at least. It usually happens at the start of a level or somewhere where it doesn't matter, except the last level in Chapter 4, which involves blowing shit up. This is the type of shit that calls our creator in the question. But, uh, 
what, what, what the, what the fuck do I do here? It's not even a hard level, come on! You know what, whatever, I'll grow past this. If I, someone with no experience in game design or planning or anything on the technical level, had to guess what's happening, I'd say it's probably a result of the pretty I lied, it's probably more of an engine issue rather than a graphical one, but come on, that was a good segue. Unless it actually is a graphical issue, in which case, cool, give me a studio that Xbox will buy and then close for no fucking reason. I don't think that it's insane to say that Wargle is the best looking WiiWare game. Like, we've been looking at the same thing, right? You fuck with this. At this point, you have to, right? In general, in a discussion about the best looking indie games, Wiggle has a spot at the table. It absolutely lose, Hollow Knight and Hades exist, but the fact that it has a chair at the round table hold is crazy when you remember that this is a 2008 WiiWare game that natively used to run exclusively at 720 fucking P! This is where that level's kinda sorta maybe sorta kinda maybe sorta maybe kinda sorta not having a straight flow does it flavors. Did I say flavors? Does it favors? Because the game will just randomly, without any pretense, drastically change the level design on a dime. You go from grasslands to grasslands with pretty sunsets to gray tumblers to organs to El Manana to red cityscapes to the hill of swords to this tarboy ass shit to fucking vector graphics? Every time you look at this game it'll look back at you warmly and passionately, take that as you will. Kyle Gabler and by extension 2D Boy and by by extension Tomorrow Corporation have a very distinct visual style that, well, yes, definitely got better as time went on, with time comes refined, still manages to be a super impressive first retail use of the style. At the time, nothing looked like it. They, they, they still don't, really. This signature personality shines in every crevice of this game, from the goo balls themselves to the level characters to the cutscenes. God, I love these cutscenes. They are so dog shit. Look at this, this looks fake. And then it circles back into being gorgeous by the end. What the fuck? I would overall have liked less plain grassland levels, but by making these drastic shifts uncommon, they become a bigger standout, resulting in them being the more vibrant moments my brain thinks of when I think of Goo Quiver 64. So the ends absolutely end up justifying the means. Plus, you know, it looks pretty all the time anyways, so that kind of makes this point useful. <laughs> Might as well go over it since I dick ride the music of games I talk about every time. Okay, look, like, listen to me, okay? Look, like, look, it's good, okay? Give me a break, let me have this. The whole OST was created by Kyle and was made free to download and still is. What a power move. Something interesting I found out about the soundtrack was how much of it wasn't made for it. Regurgitation Pumping Station was made for a short film. Rain, Rain, Windy, Windy was written for a children's film. Burning Man was made for a mystery series. Welcome to the Information Superhighway was made while Kyle was in high High school. My Virtual World of Goo Corporation and Cog in the Machine were written for other games, and they all just somehow end up bubbling into this big 25 song cesspool flawlessly. How can a soundtrack pack so much whimsy, so much oorah, and so much genuine beauty in a game about fucking slime? Well, I guess when it's pulling from multiple locations, that'll happen. It also sounds sick as fuck, too. <laughs> I've been playing this game so long that I think it's starting to affect my computer. Much like the rest of this game, the story is both nuanced and stupidly simple. At its core, World of Goo is about how shitty huge corporations are, which is based in Epic, but it's also about the exploitation of natural resources, how vain humans are, and the downsides of the internet circa 2008. World of Goo paints a picture of a world with a company so huge that it's single-handedly able to take the goo balls that the game makes a point to say were undisturbed for generations and drive them to extinction, a world where beauty reigns supreme to the point where it can be used as a literal power source, a world where humanity is rapidly evolving whether people like it or not, and if they can't keep up, they are left by the wayside and leave reality. Not figuratively, literally, because you can't stop progress until the last straw breaks, and you're left worse off than where you started. If you want a game theory, you can make the argument that the game ending with the world covered in smog could be the setup for Little Inferno, uh, but that would be for a much different video, and the last time I tried to do that, I scrapped it because it sounded like shit. It's not Shakespeare by any means, but it does paint a brutal light at some of humanity's faults. Or often harmful industrialization, how we treat 
treat people differently based on how attractive we see them as, and how not great the internet can be, again, circa 2008. Modern internet problems are a whole other thing. I don't even think 2D Boy could predict the fact that we are at the point where it seems like every week a new internet personality is being added as a pedophile. The game does end on a happy note, though. Although the Earth is now awful and all the goo balls on it have died, a select few of them have managed to repopulate on another planet. So even though humanity is fucked, the goo shall remain forever. And honestly, what more could you ask for? Like I said, it's a simple story that has its big point and some others if you look for them. It manages to tell it in a way that keeps it interesting while also bleeding into the actual gameplay. And for a puzzle game, that's literally more than the bare minimum. A puzzle game with a story is already rare, but one that has a point to make and is also interesting is a cryptid. Really, the takeaways are probably don't let Amazon get too big, don't destroy the planet, don't treat people differently based on how they look, and don't be a fucking pet. TLDR too long didn't give a shit. This game is good. Like, really good. At first, I wasn't really vibing with it. I hated how the physics were. I was not kidding when I said this game is actively fuck you all the time. But I learned to enjoy saying fuck you back. And this has become one of my favorite indie games ever is in a whole other ballpark compared to Little Inferno, and I didn't expect that at all. I hold nothing but stupid amounts of love for Little Inferno and its non-existent replayability, but this bodies it, and you have no idea how big of a thing that is for me to say. If anything, World of Goo reminded me on why indie games have become such a behemoth in the market and why they honestly deserve more. Because we would never, ever, ever get something so stupid and goo-sopping from a big publisher. Except for Nintendo, they're kind of the outlier. Except morally. Indie games are a constant carrier pigeon for shit we never get anywhere else. Like Plague Inc. or Frog Gun. Where does the brain come up with shit like this? World of Goo is a pillar in this landscape, and it earned it. Its incredibly unique premise and style works seamlessly to weave an experience that you cannot get anywhere else, and one that by god do I recommend. Once I got this game, it was a complete joy up until the very end of it. And this is also one of the few times I've had complete faith in a studio when it comes to making a sequel. In case you didn't know, World of Goo 2 is set to come out on August 2nd, and like I said, I have complete faith in Tomorrow Corp to deliver a game that not only matches the original, but surpasses it. I don't think these guys have made a bad game yet, and I doubt it'll start here. Really all it needs are more unique puzzles and to not shit the bed when I blow things up, and it'll be a game of the year contender for me. So thank you to the people who recommended me this game. God damn am I mad that I didn't play it sooner. I am also still mad that I bought my fucking Pokemon Ranch instead. But after all is said and done and the goo has been spilled, what am I left with? Well, I got a broken computer, a game I can't play, and $60 worth of fucking slimes.